It's the 1980s and in the dark basement of Nintendo headquarters, one man would unleash an icon upon the world and captivate millions of gamers across the globe for years to come. These dark times would continue until we reached the 90s, when an artist, a designer and a game programmer would come together and put a stop to this cruel tyranny. These three legends would father an icon unlike any the world had ever seen thus creating one of the biggest video game rivalries the industry had ever seen. Because, you know, that's how rivalries work. You know, you can't love both sides. You have to pick one and then the other one is complete garbage in comparison. You know, so even though Mr. Miyamoto might seem like a kind man who just wants to bring happiness to the world, which, which he is, but, you know, like let's just say for the sake of this video that he isn't. So I just want to say to Mr. Miyamoto, um, you're a stand-up guy, you've inspired millions of people, and you've brought so much happiness into this world, but, um, you didn't create Sonic, so go fuck yourself. With a sleek, fun, cool design and a badass attitude, Sonic captivated gamers across the globe and gave Mario a run, yeah, I'm not sorry for that shitty pun, for his money. Standing opposed to him was Dr. Robotnik, who really, Mario gets a lot of, you know, unjust praise for representing obese people in video games, but really Robotnik should get that praise first. Like, Robotnik, I feel, is the first ever video game character that really shows that even morbidly fat people can commit heinous crimes of terrorism. Sonic 2 improved on its predecessor by having much faster gameplay, introducing the spin dash, containing much more varied level design, changing the amount of Chaos Emeralds now to 7 instead of 6, introducing the wholly original Death Egg, and showing Tails off for the first time, who almost immediately became a fan favorite. Sonic 3 would take this even further with much larger levels and introducing shields as power-ups. The game takes place on the mysterious Angel Island, home to the Master Emerald. And, after the last game, Eggman tricks its only resident into becoming an antagonist for Sonic and Tails. After its release, the game got a special upgrade, adding the best tagline and also the best character the franchise would ever see. Knuckles. Rougher than the rest of them, the best of them, tougher than leather. You can call me Knuckles. Unlike Sonic, I don't chuckle. Sonic CD was released before Sonic 3 on the Sega CD and the Sega Mega CD. The game possesses a incredibly cool intro animation and also introduces a past, present, future gimmick to the gameplay, where actions you take in the past affect the level in the future. Sonic CD also introduces two staple characters to the franchise, the first being Amy Rose, an admirer of Sonic and who is a hostage in the game for Sonic to rescue, and the second character being Metal Sonic, who is now known as probably one of the most popular villains in the entire franchise. So those were kind of the very well-known mainline classic games that the franchise has, but with the evolution of consoles and the improvement of graphics, Sonic, like a lot of other popular icons would move over to 3D. And this is where things get interesting. Sonic had a very problematic jump to 3D from which the franchise still so uh, okay, you know, what? I'm just going to stop right there cuz the amount of fucking times that I've heard a sentence like that in professional reviews or YouTube reviews just make me want to blow my brains out. Like Sonic Adventure is sort of a bit divisive kind of, because this is Sonic's real big, like, game in 3D. And it's not just different from 2D to 3D, but also in the game's aesthetic. Like, it's not a cartoonish world, really. It's a realistic-looking world with actual humans in it. And with people saying, like, oh, well, this game fucking sucks and stuff, but especially at the time, like, Sonic Adventure got really good reviews and sold really well. Now. I'm not gonna sit here and deny that the visuals and the audio just didn't really age that well. Watch out! You're gonna crash! Ah! Having played it recently, I still really feel like the game holds up. And yeah, the gameplay is a bit buggy and clunky, you know, like you fall through the floor like randomly at some times. But like the fact that you get to play as six different characters and I mean, the physics still really hold up. I mean, there is a reason why people keep clamoring for a, a remake or a third game to be made. 
because people still really enjoy it. Uh, of course, that probably doesn't account for Big's fishing missions, which honestly, like, that should have just been like a, a bonus mission or something, or like a mini game that you could play, because Jesus Christ, that part fucking sucks. But story wise, the game actually takes more risks. Like, Eggman is a lot more threatening and actually, like, tells people, like, I'm gonna kill you. Or Newcomer Gamma's storyline is actually a lot deeper than you'd expect from, like, a fucking kid's game. So, I feel like Adventure did more positive than negative things. And now we get to probably, like, one of the biggest highlights of the entire franchise, which is Sonic Adventure 2. Like, this is the game that introduced Shadow, and regardless, you know, like, oh, he's an edgelord. Yeah, he's fucking edgy, but, you know, he's also fucking cool. Like, people love him for a reason. Um, the, the gameplay is, like, really fun because it splits it now up into a hero and a villain side, which is actually, like, if you get to play as the bad guys, that's always a fucking bonus in my book. Always. And th there's the problem that they kind of feel too similar to each other in some ways. Like, I feel like Sonic and Shadow's stuff is probably the highlight of the entire game and the most fun. Uh, Eggman and Tails are kind of just kind of button mashing and... I don't know, like, I get that Eggman can walk around, but Tails doesn't really work, like, being in a jet, in my opinion. And, well, Knuckles and Rouge's treasure hunting missions just fucking suck, but... I, like, again, similar to Adventure, you also have the storyline takes a much, like, serious tone with Shadow's backstory and, like, the, the arc and people dying. Like, the fucking half of the moon gets blown up, and a little girl got fucking shot by soldiers. Like, that stuff, like, I, I'd, I'd really want to see if Mario had the balls to do something like that. And you might think, like, well, that sounds fucking stupid, but honestly, it kind of works. I, I mean, for the aesthetic that we have right now, it definitely wouldn't, but, I mean, the game story works, and I feel like overall the gameplay does still hold up. Like, Sonic Adventure 2 is incredibly solid, for the most part. And now we come over to Sonic Heroes, and, um... Yeah, yeah, this game is... this game is cheesy as fuck. Like, the dialogue and everything is just... But also, in comparison to the previous two games, it's also a lot more back to the cartoonish side of Sonic. Um, and what I do like about it is that it takes, like, with Adventure 2, with splitting up the story, it does that, like, twice as much now, because you have four different teams. And I think even, like, it was a big deal that you had 12 playable characters at the time. I thought that... I think that was a big deal back then. But, um, I mean, it does come to the problem that, similar to Adventure 2, like, yeah, you have different characters, but a lot of them do play this similarly. Like, you, you have a speed character, a technique, like, flight character, and a power character. And they do kind of feel the same. Even if, you know, like, the, there's dialogue differences and, you know, them, them, there might be, like, slight differences, but honestly, they do play the same for the most part. And... What I, I really feel like Heroes try to, I feel, dial back a bit, maybe? And like, it is regarded as a bit of a weaker entry in comparison to the two adventure games, but... What I definitely think, like, it did accomplish that was really well done is putting Metal Sonic up as even more of a villain. Like, Neo is fucking threatening and the fucking Metal Overlord is a really cool fucking boss. Even though it does kinda suck that Tails and Knuckles don't get super forms at the end. Like, they just get golden circles around them. That's, that's, that's not really, like, they have super forms. And I don't give a shit that Knuckles is pink. Like, I'm, I'm secure so about that shit. Like, I'll fucking wear that proudly. It's fucking 2020, bitch. I'm, I'm up for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I say that Heroes is kind of an okay sort of entry to close out the first sort of 3D games that Sonic really had. Oh yeah, and um, as a quick sort of side note, it's uh, for some reason, in comparison to the other three, like the Chaotix have their missions are just mostly fetch quests for some reason. I don't know why. I mean, it doesn't really... Uh, I, if it's to differentiate, I mean, fetch quests are not fucking fun. Like, if those things are fucking everywhere in modern games now. They're not fun. So, uh, but yeah, I, I just guess that they're, uh, they're a special bunch of guys. And uh, yeah, I guess that that's just the, the case. Find the computer room! 
Hi there. Uh, second side note, I also want to address like uh, some criticism that I've seen um, of Sonic that honestly I just think is ridiculous, especially in our professional gaming. I mean, if you don't know by this point that professional gaming journalism is a fucking joke, I, I think you'll probably get it from this or from other sources, maybe if you've seen through recent events with games. But um, yeah. Uh, I just want to put this up quickly because I, I do think it puts it up in a light. So yeah, enjoy. I think we're okay. I think we're at a point talk. where we need to admit that this was never really a great franchise, nope. and then we they, we keep trying and trying and trying to find this thing that was never really actually there. Sonic was never good. Shut the fuck up. You're a fucking cunt. Shut the fuck up You're a stupid cunt Suck my dick Shut the fuck up Stop being a fucking cunt Shut the fuck up In the franchise, I kinda wanna in this section address all of the sort of spin-off content that Sonic sort of had um, just here want to do a quick mention of the Archie and IDW comics, which both are excellent and I definitely recommend. You know, Archie had a little troubled history with Ken Penders and stuff, but honestly I still think that most of them are a good read and I definitely recommend the IDW comics. I'm collecting them right now and they're, they're fucking good. Tyson Hess is, um, Tyson Hess is, he knows his shit. He knows his shit. While there are the obvious, you know, Nintendo DS versions of the mainline games, uh, there were also some exclusive DS games, uh, most notably Sonic Rush, Sonic Rush Adventure, and Sonic Chronicles Dark Brotherhood. Uh, Brotherhood is a sort of more of an RPG-ish spin-off. Um, I wasn't, like, the best received, but what I'd say is more notably is the Sonic Rush games, which actually introduced Blaze, uh, one of the most popular characters we have, and also sort of introduced the boost gameplay that we have in the modern games, and w would also be used in other games like the, the Nintendo DS version of Sonic Colors. And I'd mostly say like these games are a fun sort of side adventure with different characters that I'd actually recommend getting. And now we've arrived to the Sonic storybook uh, portion of the games. So Sega had the idea of putting Sonic in these sort of like different world tales, kind of. And it's a cool idea, I guess, but I mean there were only two of these games because I'd say that both of them didn't really take off too well. And these were Sonic and the Secret Rings and Sonic and the Black Knight. Uh, Secret Rings is, mm, I'd say, probably like the definitely the weaker of these two, uh, which puts Sonic in the world of sort of the Arabian Nights. Um, honestly, like everything I've seen from this game, I I found it uninteresting, especially the bad guy and um, just overall the the overall aesthetic of the game isn't really fun. The only thing that I honestly remember from this game is that it has a cool intro sequence with uh, all the, the the ring and the fire and stuff but other than that it's like make release we ball uh -huh. and that's really it like other than that the, i forget this game exists constantly but then we move over to sonic and the black knight and honestly i really like this one like not only does it have like a fucking kick-ass main theme uh the intro cutscene is probably one of the best that sonic has like, it, his personality is so fucking cool in it. Like, it really sh literally shows how it is, how he gets dropped into this different world and how he reacts to it, which is fucking cool. Um, I'd say, like, the idea of having other characters work as sort of antagonist or in that world is, it's kind of funny, I'd say. Um, and especially, like, the final boss and cutscene are so fucking cool. Like, it's full on just ridiculous cheese and it's it's fucking glorious now the game does kind of suffer from like a big curse that you get around that time which was fucking motion controls like that does like i get it, it's supposed to resemble oh you you are swinging the sword and stuff but it's it's really fucking awkward and there there is there are like parts especially cuz the 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 sword that you use talks as sort of a companion 
But there's also f stuff in the game, like dialogue, that really makes me wonder, like, w who wrote this and why did you think that this was a scene that you had to put in? <laughs> upon my honor give me a break what's up with all this drama like sonic he, he was about to fucking kill himself and you're like like imagine walking up to a person who like is standing on the top of a building He's like i'm gonna jump and you're like what's up with all this drama just get over yourself man like what the fuck is this and then Sonic was also known for being a cartoon character. He had actually had multiple kids shows that he starred in, you know, classically the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. And where Eggman is actually kind of like a, okay, Robotnik is actually like a fucking psychopath. And it's, it's kind of what you expect from a kid's cartoon, you know, it's so, like dumb, fun, Saturday morning stuff. Uh, it actually, like, some of them introduce the, the Freedom Fighters and, you know, Sally Acorn and stuff that you would see in the Archie comics. Um, also, really don't like, like, for some reason, Tails has some poop brown fur. It looks fucking ugly as hell. And uh, actually, fun thing is that Sonic was voiced by Jaleel White of all people. You know, the Steve Urkel. Did I do that guy? Like, yeah, fucking him. He was Sonic fucking Hedgehog. And it wasn't like the, the show was also you know like, oh, look at this. Sonic does adventurous stuff on his island, and he's stopping bad guys, and he's saving rabbits and stuff. But it's also there were also some like, they tried more adult messaging and stuff. And honestly, looking at it back. It's probably like it was an important messaging and stuff to help kids, but I, I just can't s sit there, watch that, and laugh at it. I just think it's hilarious. Kids, there's nothing more cool than being hugged by someone you like. But if someone tries to touch you in a place or in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, that's no good. Oh yeah, and uh, Sonic Underground exists. For some reason. And then we get to the one that I'm most acquainted with, which is Sonic X. Uh, Sonic X was running around the same time as Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 were coming out, which, if you watch the show, there's clear, like, overlapping stuff with both games, and that makes sense, because the, the show is actually very similar to the adventure games, where Sonic and his pals then end up in the regular human world, and we get in all kinds of hijinks with that, and there's a lot of fun stuff. And uh, we also can't forget that we then get introduced into the best character in the Sonic franchise. No, not Knuckles. You thought Knuckles was the best? No, 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 no. Uh, you, you think Sonic? Shadow? Fuck no, those characters suck. We get introduced to f motherfucking Chris Thorndike. Hell yeah. Senpai Chris is here for your amusement. I, I can't even say this seriously. Like, this character fucking sucks. He's so annoying. Jesus Christ. Like, Sonic X is probably the best anime to ever exist, and yeah, I said anime. Sonic X is an anime. Like, you, what, you watch any of those other shitty baby shows like fucking Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, or Phineas and Ferb or some shit like that? Like, no, that's fucking gay. Get that shit out of here. Sonic X is fucking best. Like, you don't need any better protagonist than fucking Sonic. You don't need Naruto, you don't need fucking Goku, Kakashi, Kara, K Beta, Kara Cake, uh, you don't fucking need um, the fucking bald guy, um, what's his fucking name? Oh yeah, Vegeta, yeah, that's his fucking name. Uh, yeah, you don't need fucking those characters, all you need is Sonic and Chris Thorndike, because he's the best. And then finally, the last and most recent Sonic cartoon we have is the Sonic Boom cartoon show. Yeah, there was a cartoon show from Sonic Boom. That game. Like, don't worry, that one's that one's coming up later. And, um, yeah, honestly, I'd say... Season 1 is a little rough, where it's like, oh, like, you know, straightforward cartoon stuff where you have characters do menial stuff like, oh, Sonic has to return a library book. And they, they fucking get, meet this character and uh, I guess hijinks ensue, but whatever. And the animation quality isn't really the best and 
Uh, but seriously, around season two, it really picks up. And the, the show, what the show does, which is kind of funny, is that it has a lot of self-referential humor to itself and the fan base and the whole franchise, which is a pretty fucking good laugh. And honestly, I'm kind of sad it only lasted two seasons because it got, it definitely got better. And you guys are gonna want to check this out. We're not falling for that. It's the oldest trick in the Jungle Predator book. I've been meaning to read that book. How is it? Not as bad as the movie. Studios should stop recycling the same tired old properties and make something original for once. <coughs> Who dares oppose Nominatus, viral sensation and destructor of worlds? Viral sensation? You mean like that cute sneezing panda? Or all those weird pictures of me? <laughs> Look what I found at the flea market! Dude, is that Tomato Potamus too? That's the best one in the entire series! Tomato Potamus never worked in 3D. Game companies always ruin their beloved franchises. And they never should have changed the color of Tomato Potamus's legs. No, no, stop. You're pure evil. Why are you coloring my arms? And now we're here at the sports section of this video. And, well, the most noticeable one that I can talk about is Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Because, yeah, after years of rivalries, imagine that finally Mario and Sonic would do this, you know, like this big crossover together. And it's a sort of sports Olympic spinoff, which is fine, I guess. Um... But honestly, the games are a lot better than you might think. I mean, they've been going on for a good amount of years. Uh, I do think, like, sadly, the Winter Games, uh, they didn't do one last time, so I think they're stopping with that series. But recently, the newest game in Tokyo actually did, uh, do, did do some fun stuff. Like, they tried to have a sort of classic pixel mode where you can play the game mode, and that's a really full cool fucking concepts to do with these characters, especially like seeing their uh, their classic designs next to each other, which is, um, the only thing is kind of like, the, it's weird seeing the 8-bit Mario designs next to the 16-bit Sonic designs, but um, honestly, I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, these games are actually a lot better than you than I ever thought they would be, and I've gotten a lot of fun from them, especially the my, back in my ch child days when I played them on the DS. However, there is like a small thing that uh, when the game started out it was just, you know, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games and Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games. But now that those games like more come out, they have to specify the titles a bit. So we get Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games, Sochi 2014 or London 2012. And these titles just keep getting like they, they're, they just keep getting more complicated until we'll most likely end up uh, with... Mario and Sonic at the Paralympic Mega Official Very Real Japanese Held European Sponsored Super Ultra Turbo Mega Deluxe Edition at Knuckles. Just like most other big franchises, Sonic got his own racing spin-off games, and yes, the idea of Sonic, the super speedy hedgehog in a car, is kinda as ridiculous as it sounds, but I guess it's just to level the playing field. The first of these games was Sonic Drift, which was a basic kart racing game back in the day, and then got a sequel to Sonic Drift 2, which mostly just added more characters and flared things up a bit. I'd say the first one that really changed this up was Sonic R, where they had the logical thinking of, hey, Sonic can run fucking fast, so let, let him run, and then they just have all the other characters run at similar speeds, except for Eggman, because he's a fat piece of shit and he needs to sit in a giant floating egg. And Sonic R is probably one of the most known out of these games, uh, especially being the R being used in the most recent racing game in its logo as a sort of fun teaser, most likely means that it still has some effect in the fan base. Later on, Sonic got back into the racing game with Sonic Riders, because they had the idea, well, cars are kind of basic, everyone does it, and we don't want Sonic to run because, yeah, the, the level playfield just doesn't work. So we need an idea that is cool and different, you know, like Sonic. So what are we gonna do? Fucking hoverboards. Oh, uh, extreme gear, but come on, they're fucking hoverboards. And therefore we have the Sonic Rider series. Um, these games are actually kind of fun, and they utilize a different mechanic than you would see in most racers, with the extreme gear working on air power that you need to refill during the while you're doing the race until you get to the finish line, which, oh okay, yeah, that's fucking logical. These games introduced us to the Babylon Rogues, a new rival team for Sonic and his pals to oppose them in this specific series. And I'd say that they are mostly fun characters, even though they're a bit, like, 
a copy of them, you know, like you have the fast leader, the smart one, and the big, dumb, strong one. Riders would then get a sequel called Zero Gravity, which then implemented a new mechanic with a gravity ring where you're allowed to use it to slow down time, it could be really useful for corners, and actually had a more of an impact in a story mode. Like, yes, these two games had a story mode, and yeah, they're kind of a bit box standardish, unless you get to the end where it gets all like fucking crazy Babylonian flying city shit, but other than that, I'd say that these mostly work. And then we got to the third entry. The final entry in this franchise was Sonic Freeriders for... Wait, let me look. What, what console was this? Xbox Connect. Fuck. Yeah, what you can most likely expect from such a masterpiece of a console happened to this game. Just buggy, not working controls. Also didn't help that the story was just completely removed for the most part, being replaced by slideshows of characters talking. Now having that being the end result that there hasn't been an entry in this series for a good amount of years and I think thanks to this game there most likely will never be one again. Which is kind of a shame. But hey, the Babylon Rogue showed up in the comics so I guess they'll still want to use the characters, that's something. Now moving on to the more recent Sonic and Sega All-Stars racing games, created by Sumo Digital. After all of the previous games, it does appear like Sumo Digital went over to Sonic and said, you're gonna get back in that car, motherfucker, and you're gonna stay in there. And honestly, I think it's for the best, because these games are pretty fun and good. As a kid, I remember playing the crap out of the DS game and just having memories of me sitting on the couch even when I wasn't allowed to play anymore because I had time limits. I would just sit there in the menu screen, wait, and watch the opening animation because I just thought it was so goddamn cool. And that's the thing, I mostly didn't know any of the characters. I was just looking at it like, wow, there's my favorite characters, Sonic, Tails, Eggman, the Japanese guy on a motorbike. Uh, monkey? Uh, Mexican monkey, I think? I don't know, who the fuck are you? Like some s space lady or something? Like, holy shit, that guy just jumped out of a car and punched it to make it go faster. Like, what the fuck? Who is this guy? Smartly, Sega had them make a sequel, Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed, which added sea and sky vehicle sections, which really changed up the gameplay and made the levels really fun. Now instead of simply racing over land, you have multiple options to traverse the same level. Yeah, there were mandatory sections and sometimes very large ones for certain levels, but it was definitely better than the traditional gameplay that you see in most kart racers. The game also added in more classic characters from Sega properties, like Metal Sonic from, well, of course, Sonic, and other famous Sega characters like Danica Patrick and Disney's Wreck-It Ralph and, wait, is, is that TF2? Is that the Heavy, the Spy, and the Pyro from TF2? Holy shit, like, this is not a joke, that's, that's fucking awesome! Look at my boys go! These two games then got a spiritual third game, also developed by Sumo Digital, called Team Sonic Racing, which recently released. The game does away with the sea and the sky racing vehicle ideas and adds in a team mechanic, similar to Sonic Heroes, where racers are racing in teams instead of alone, and they are divided in speed, technique, and power characters who can help each other out. And you give items or speed boosts to your teammates to hopefully get to that first place. And you don't actually get first place just by you finishing first, but your team as a whole, their entire score needs to be the highest. So if you end up first but your teammates end up in last place, you're most likely not going to win. Which is a cool idea to incentivize people to work together in order to win, and it's a different thing than most kart racers. The game also uses, instead of generic items like a baseball glove or like a, a punching glove, they use wisps as the items. And yeah, you can see clear like comparisons to the Mario shells or stuff or the banana peels and stuff. And yeah, at this point, the wisps are kind of overused. But honestly, I take the wisps over fucking generic ass items any day of the week. A big problem that I have though with the game is the roster because. 
if you haven't noticed from the title, this is not a Sega All-Stars racing game, it's a Sonic racing game. So none of the other Sega characters are in there except for Sonic characters. But that's not the only problem, because even though it's only Sonic characters, which you would then think, oh well, people love them the most, but the roster exists out of 15 total developed in three teams, and most of them are, you know, logic, like Sonic Heroes, where you have Sonic Tails and Knuckles, and then you have Dark with um, Shadow, Rouge, and Omega, and you know, those teams. But then you have weird ones, like, you have Team Rose, and they actually brought Big back, but Cream isn't there, and she's replaced by a bunch of Chows racing in a car. And then Team Eggman, who I get needs a power member, and Eggman doesn't really have a lot of power members on his team usually that are solid members, but then they bring back Zavik, who he's he's also gonna get discussed later, don't worry. Like, that's one of the problems. Like, so you have the Sonic cast available directly in that view, and you only have these 15 in your game. Like, that's, and some of these choices are really weird. Again, like Vector with Blaze and Silver, and I get Blaze and Silver are a problem because they're made as a duo when most teams are made out of three, but then having Vector there so just so that SP on Charmy can't is kind of dumb. Um, the game also boasts a bit of a story mode, but honestly, it's not really a story mode. It's a bunch of missions and races, and they're held together by a pretty like bog-standard flimsy collection of cutscenes, or kind of like a slideshow, it's a bit better than Free Riders, but I mean, at least it's there. A lot of other like racing games don't have it, so it's nice that it's there, at least. Also, it really seemed like there were no sort of plans for DLC of any kind, just these 15 and then nothing else, which just bogs me. Like, they had sort of add-ons or DLC for the other two games, so why didn't this game why were there no plans for this one? Like, it just feels like they had the idea of, oh, we'll just put this out, It'll like we'll have it there, and th that's just it. But that makes no sense. Why would you just have it there? Also, that the game did kind of underperform, even though I thought it was actually really fun. But, like, you can't find a fucking game anymore. Like, the, unless you are, like, maybe specifically in the Discord server, which I think I'll, I'm in and I'll put in the description below if anyone's interested to look for games there. But other than that, finding a game is a slog. Like... Oh, st till this day, it still just boggles me what their idea was with this game. And now to finish off the spin-off section, we come to a pretty good recent news of hope, which was the Sonic movie. I'd say that probably everyone and their grandmother already knew the situation with the first trailer and then what the studio then changed it for the actual final movie. And really, like, seeing this has given me a lot of hope that I didn't recently have for this franchise and especially with how it turned out. Like, don't get me wrong, it is sort of a basic kids movie in some regards, but there are really good moments that just make me so fucking happy to have seen it and the way that it, like, the way that everything ended up with the box office and stuff and that we're most likely getting a sequel or potential sequels is just such good fucking news in such a long time that I'm just, I'm really happy. I'm just. Everything about it, I'm just so happy. Like, um, honestly, everything that resulted with the movie, like Sonic's design, fucking great. It's, it's not exactly one for one, but it's, it's, it's solid. It's really, really good. Jim Carrey's performance, no complaints there. It was fucking great. I had a blast. He was one, I, I think, actually the best part about it. Um, yeah, and other than that, there's not really anything I'd, I'd change about it. Yeah, like, there's there's not a single thing that uh, I, I think I'd want to change about it. No. 10 out of 10.